Okay, so we are joined by none other than Marwan El Shabagi, the absolute legend from Egypt. Um, so Squashpod is extremely lucky to have Marwan. Uh, we are on court number. What court are we on, Marwan? Actually, no idea. <laughs> no, no idea. It's not, it's not one of the main two courts, though. Maybe court number three, I would say. Maybe court three. Yeah, you had some decent victories on court three. Never played on that court before. I played on one and two. Yeah. Uh, Actually, I played, I played the Welsh Junior Open on the 17. Yeah. I remember that one. And I played it on the 19. I think on the under 17. I won the under 17 and then I came second in the under 19. Yeah. So I, I, I played the Welsh Junior Open a couple of times and then I. Uh, this is my first season to play for the PSL team as well here, which is, yeah. which is just perfect for me. It's not far from Bristol where, where I'm based. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, Cardiff is a nice city. I mean, the supporters, I mean, the, the support we've had all season is fantastic. And, yeah. Uh, I think it's. Uh, I would love to. Uh, I would definitely be playing for the for the, for the, for yeah. the team uh, next season. Oh, that's absolutely brilliant! Because obviously, just narrowly missing out on promotion, we need players like you playing more often. Um, so obviously, you know, you've your highest world ranking is number three, right? Um, so, um, and you're known as the jackal. Yeah. So wh why the jackal? Well, to be honest, I don't know why they've chosen <laughs> that name for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, some people think it describes me the best, some people don't, you're don't a think so. You're a hunter on court. I, yeah. I, I don't know, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> they call me the jackal. I mean, if it suits me, it suits me. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I don't really think it suits me the best, I would say. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I enjoy I mean, people enjoy it and I enjoy it. I mean. So for the listeners who are listening, obviously our podcast is designed to, uh, for people in Wales. Uh, so we have a lot of people who who maybe aren't familiar with with yourself um but you're egyptian right and egypt egypt is so dominant in the world of squash at the moment wales doing very well as well right um, i actually think yeah. so yeah. I, mean, yeah I mean i mean the reason why i think egypt is very good at squash i think it started with a player like ahmed barada back in the days where people were basically there was a good marketing marketing team behind him and I think I'm, I'm like I used to go to the tournament in the pyramids and I used to go and watch him and learn from him a lot you know uh, I think after Barada we had Chabana who became world champion the first Egyptian ever to become world number one as well and then Rami after Darwish and my brother I mean we only had you know I think we've always had a player to follow you know uh, and of course the parents were pushing us I would say uh, pushing us too hard because you know when you're a kid you don't really know you don't know what's the right decision what's the wrong decision yeah. for you you know so it's, it's always good to have your parents you know pushing you towards your goal to achieve your goal yeah. uh, but I think to be honest the squash in Wales is doing amazing I mean it's doing better than I would say 10 years ago I mean now you've got players like Joel Makin who's inside the top 20 and uh, you've got Tesney Evans she's inside the top 10 so I mean yeah. the squash in Wales is getting better very, and bigger and uh, very exciting for us it's yeah. very exciting you know I mean, yeah. Joel is really young Tesney's really still young Peter Pleed of course is still there he's based in, with me in Bristol and he's playing amazing squash and you know yeah. it's, uh, Emer as well Tesney's brother I mean squash yeah. in Wales is getting for me I think I see it better I mean I think Dave Evans, is, of course, as a head coach, of course, he must be doing a great job with them. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, if we can get more people in Wales doing just like you and, and, and Mohammed, um, you know, there's just, generations just, of kids who are going to be... Just me, not Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> just me, yeah, yeah, just me. Um, one last question for you, Marwan. Um, in terms of technology uh, in, in squash, um, what, how do you use technology in your training routine? To be honest, what sort of technology do you use? Uh, with technology, I don't really, well, I wouldn't say I'm using technology really. I mean, just getting on court and yeah. just getting on with it really. I mean, um, I, I, I won't say, I mean, technology, I mean, um, do, you, do you track data? Do I would you watch, I know, the only thing yeah. I would do is probably watch my matches and learn from the mistake I've done and see my weakness area and try to improve them. Yeah. Just getting inside the court and, I mean, if you go inside the court and you just train with no, uh, with, without any targets, you know, then yeah. I think. It's just useless, you know. Like you have, there, there, there have to be an aim to improve, or something to improve, you know. You, know, you have to improve your game, you know. If you keep doing the same thing, you'll never improve as a player, you know. You have to see where your weakness part is and you have to work on it, you know. You have to kind of get out of your comfort zone a little bit. I mean, you have to find your comfort zone and get out, get out of it. Make, it, make it harder for yourself, you know. If it's always nice and easy, then you'll never get better, yeah. you know, in a way. So it's, uh, 
it's just, I would say, always like train clever, more like train clever, not don't just train hard for no reason. You know? Exactly, exactly. Um, Marwan, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you very much. Good luck tonight. Thanks, mate.